Jesus, you brought me all the way, and you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior, I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carried my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carry my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. And you carry my burdens every day. You are such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Well, God bless you, Sister Polk. God bless you, Deacon Polk. God bless you, Brother and Sister Dorset. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you. Good morning, Lady Holden. God bless you and Bishop. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. Good morning, Elder and Sister Adams. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Malloy. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Howard. God bless you. Good morning, Kathy. God bless you and Brother Butler. Good morning, Mama Nett. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Mother Holman. Good morning, Sister Caprice. Good morning, Manessa. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Miriam. Good morning, Brother Bailey. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Elder and Sister Bailey. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Petlar. Good morning, Elder and Sister Mott. God bless you. Good morning, Sister McLeod. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. Good morning, Mother Morris. Good morning, Dion. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning. Sister Ronza, God bless you. Sister Sarah, good morning. Sister Angela, God bless you. Sister Dawes and Minister Dawes, God bless you both. Excuse me, good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. Good morning, Sister Gwen. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Chambers. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Murphy Jackson. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Stimson. God bless you and Brother Stimson. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Pride. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Duchess. Good morning, Sister Diaz. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Carson. Good morning, Mother Hudson. Good morning, Sister Sessions. Good morning, Tiana. Good morning, Bishop Desnett Alde. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Midwhite. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Monique. Good morning, Sister Hatch. Praise the Lord. Crystal, good morning, Mother Wilkins. God bless you and Deacon Wilkins. Good morning, Sister Nicholson. Good morning, Sister Petlaw. God bless you, Sister Wiggins. Good morning to you and Brother Wiggins. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Kinlock. Good morning, Sister Roberts. God bless you. Good morning, Duchess. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Daniel. God bless you, Kathy. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of God through prayer. God hearing the prayers of those who believe, those who trust him, those who look to him. God honoring it by answering our prayers. And I'm thanking God today for his safety and protection and all that the Lord is, all that he remains to us, and all that he continues to show each of us daily. So as always, if you have a prayer request, if you're on Facebook, please place it into the chat 
or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can add your prayer request to the chat or you can um, direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor R. JD. And if you are on um, YouTube or the conference call, and thank God for our conference call listeners, and anybody can use the text line to text to 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. And you can text and share your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer book, to the prayer list. And we're believing God each day that God would continue to bless and overshadow your life with his presence, his favor, and his glory. I want to return back to the fifth chapter of the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. And I want to read verses 9 through 13. 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. The Bible says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he have testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I want to continue um, from the subject, the record and the witness. And this is part two, the record and the witness. Um, yesterday, I gave the example that major events, major events in your life are um, substantiated through a witness and through a record. When you are born, there is somebody standing nearby with a clock and a calendar to record, to record the date and the time of your birth. And that person signs the record as the witness that I was there when this person was born. Somebody was there when I was born, and I think I was born at about 6 a.m. on July 15th, 1966, and they recorded it. My mother, of course, was there, but they didn't use her as the witness. Someone who was not giving birth is the witness that Reginald Joel Davis was born on July 15th, 1966 at about um, 6 a.m. When I, I share with you, when I got married, um, our pastor, Bishop, the late Bishop Rufus Hargrove did the wedding. But on my license, there are two signatures that are the witnesses of our marriage, that on September 15th, 1990, Reginald Davis married Charity Ruth Austin um, on that day, and they became husband and wife. And we have the signature of Pastor Hargrove, but also the signature of the two witnesses on the record, the record that is kept in the courthouse um, in the county in which we were married, there is a record with the signature of the witnesses. So witnesses and records are important because if someone comes to try to invalidate your birth or invalidate your marriage or invalidate your license to drive or invalidate your license to, to teach or whatever the license may be, your license to minister. There is a record. There is a record of that license. There's a record and there are signatures on that license that prove that there are witnesses to whatever the claim is. They're married. They're ordained. Whatever the claim is, there is a witness and a record of that. And so he, he makes the point, and as we shared yesterday, that the um, witness is the father 
Hallelujah. The, the Spirit bears witness, all right? And the record is kept by the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And they are one. These three are one. And then those that bear witness in the earth are the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And they agree in one. Well, John carries on this um, continued um, theme of witness and record when he says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. You know, a, a lot of people stand on what a man has told them. And I'll tell you this, that certainly there were people there when the Lord saved me. There were people there when the Lord delivered me. There were people there when the Lord redeemed me. But I would rather have the witness of God than the witness of man. I would rather have the witness of God. I would rather have God validate, hallelujah, that I'm saved. Because the witness of man only lasts as long as the man lasts. What happens when the man is dead? What happens when the man has gone on from labor to reward? What happens when the man is no longer here? What happens if the man's witness is not valid because he's not honest? Because there are a lot of people out there that will tell you that you're saved that really don't know that you're saved. In fact, how does a man know that another man is saved? Yes, we know the signs. Yes, we recognize what the scripture says. But the true knowledge of our salvation cannot come from a man. That's why you don't depend on a man to tell you that you're saved. You don't depend on a man to tell you, oh, I know you're a good Christian. I know you love the Lord. Yes, you 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 say that. And yes, we might do things things to reveal that. But how does the man know? How does the man know that he's saved except from the witness and the record of God? How does anyone know that they're saved except from the witness and the record of God? And so he says, if we receive the witness of men, <coughs> excuse me, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God that he have testified of his son. Now, what validates the witness of God is that not only is the witness of God validating um, us, the witness of God is validating Christ. The witness of God is validating Christ. The witness of God is testifying of Christ. This is the witness that he have testified of his son. God himself testified of the veracity and the validity of Jesus Christ and that same God testifies that we are born of the Son. That's why he says, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself that the Holy Spirit validates your salvation. Once again, this is one reason why we need the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit validates our salvation. The Holy Spirit testifies of the veracity of our salvation. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to guess, because when the Lord pours his spirit out upon you and into you, that gives you the witness. The Bible says we've received the witness in our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The witness is given to us through the Holy Spirit that we are indeed born again. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Is not a man, is not a person, is not an individual, but it's the Holy Spirit because he believeth not, he believeth God. And because you believe on the Son of God, you have the witness within yourself. The Holy Spirit testifies of your salvation. The Holy Spirit testifies of your walk with Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit testifies that you are in fellowship with the Lord. Now look at this. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Now this is important because I've talked about this more than one time. But I think it's important because it's a theme in the scripture, and that is faith and belief. Because, you know, there are three levels. There are three levels. There are believers, there are doubters, and there are unbelievers. Let me say that again. There are believers, there are doubters, and there are unbelievers. We are believers because we believe Jesus Christ. We believe in our salvation. We believe in the efficacy of the blood. We are believers. Then you have doubters. There are people that allow their mental reservations to interfere with their faith. I'm going to say it again. They allow their mental reservations to interfere with their faith. And so when they ought to believe, they, when they ought to trust, they waver in their confidence. But then the third and the most dangerous category are 
unbelievers. And unbelievers are people that choose not to believe the word or in God or believe God and what God says. They have chosen. They have chosen not to believe. And when you choose not to believe a God that is eternal, a God that cannot lie, a God that everything, everything exists by his word, you are challenging the integrity of God. And because you're challenging the integrity of God, God, you are in essence calling God a liar. If God says he can save you, if God says he can deliver you, if God says he can redeem you and you ignore what God says and you says, oh no, you can't do that, Lord, then you are calling God a liar. You are saying, God, you don't tell the truth. Nothing you say is true. And in essence, everything about the world is untrue because you are calling God that liar. And that's why John said he that believeth not have God have made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. See, God not only gave the record of us, but he gave the record of Jesus Christ that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is, hallelujah, the savior of the world. This is the Messiah. This is the Christ, the son of the living God. God has given us this record through himself that from the beginning of time, Jesus Christ was God. From the beginning, from everlasting to everlasting, the Bible says, thou art God. Jesus said in his prayer at Gethsemane that he and the Father were one from the beginning. He was not an afterthought. He didn't come later on, but from the beginning, from the same way you can't find the birth date of, of, of God. You can't find the spiritual birth date of Jesus Christ. Maybe if you do some searching and record keeping, you might be able to find what was the natural birth date, even though I don't know there's a written record anywhere that says that, you know, we use December 25th, but we know that's not the, the birth date of Jesus Christ because he wasn't born in December. More than likely, he was born in the springtime around April or May. But whatever the case may be, Jesus, hallelujah, the record of Jesus is not dependent upon man's record. The record of Jesus is dependent upon the record of God. God declares that he is his son. God declares that he is the redeemer. God declares this is the record, the Bible says, that God have given us eternal life and this life is in his son. God has given us eternal life. That's the record. And his life is in his son. He gave Jesus, hallelujah. He gave Jesus his identity. He gave Jesus his validity of who he is and the record and his life is in his son. My access to eternal life comes by Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus declares. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. If you come any other way, you come come as a thief, you come as a robber. So he's the access point to the grace of God, to salvation, to deliverance, to healing. All of that comes through Jesus Christ. And that's the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. Let me say that again. He that hath the son hath life. If you have Jesus in your life, you have life. If you have Jesus as your savior, you. If you as have Jesus as your redeemer, if you have Jesus as your salvation, your propitiation, your mercy seat, then guess what? You have life. He that have the son have life. If you have Jesus, you have life. Hallelujah. If you have Jesus, if Jesus is the Lord and the savior of your life, then guess what? You have life. You have life not only on this side, but you have life on the other side. You have eternal life. He that that have the son have life and he that have not the son of God have not life. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus that has come through the grace of God, if you have not been born of the water and of the spirit, you don't have life. You don't have life. You have existence. You're breathing, you're moving, you're operating, but you don't have life. You don't have life and you don't have eternal life. What will carry you into the next life? What will deliver you from the judgment that is to come upon every for every person in humanity if you don't have Jesus Christ? You don't have life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Jesus Christ is the access point, saints. And I know that we live in a pluralistic society and there are a lot of different beliefs, a lot of different mindsets. And as an American, you have the right to believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not here to tell you you don't have that right. You have the right to believe whatever you want to believe. Even as a human being, you have the right of free choice and free will. You can believe whatever you want to believe. But I came to tell you, if you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, God. You will exercise that right of unbelief all the way to the lake of fire. You will exercise that unbelief all the way to the gate of hell because Jesus Christ is the source of life. He is the source of life. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. And J John said, I wrote these things to you that you might believe. Hallelujah. He's written the word. The word is given to us that we might believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. In other words, the, your faith in Jesus Christ gives you eternal life. Your faith in Jesus Christ gives you access through the name. There is no other name. And yes, saints, the name matters. I'm going to say it again. The the name matters. Hallelujah. The apostle said, there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation comes through the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation comes through the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, his name, his name. There's authority attached to the name. My time is gone, but I got to say this. Your name releases everything about you. That's why it's called a signature. It's it's called a signature. If you want to sign a contract, your authority is in the ability to sign your name on the contract. If you want to write a check, you have to sign your name to the check for the check to be valid. You have to sign your name, hallelujah, to leases and car notes, anything that's important, you sign your name because the authority of who you are is attached to your name. And everything about Jesus, hey, God is attached to his name, his name, his name, at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow, every tongue has got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is attached to the name, it's attached to the name, saints, and I'm so glad that the record contains the name, oh God, somebody said the blood, the blood is signed my name, it's written, oh my God, in the Lamb's Book of Life. My name is written, is signed there because the name matters. My God, I've got to quit, but the name matters. We have the witness. We have the record. The witness of God is greater. And we have the record, hallelujah, that life is in the Son of God. And he has written our names on high. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. My gracious God, I love you. I honor you. I worship and adore you. Lord, I thank you for the beginning of another day. Lord, you have awakened us in our right minds. We were able to get up and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers from all over the world. Lord, you've brought us together once again to say thank you, to worship you, to honor you, to be in your presence. And I'm asking you now to let your presence fill this prayer room today. Oh, Shandala Masitaye, allow your presence to fill, Lord, the, the conference call, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Lord, this so that we all know that we are in your presence. And if we're in your presence, we're in the position to be blessed, to have our prayers and our petitions answered. I thank you, God, for every petition that has come before you, every request, every individual, my God, that is praying and believing and trusting you for what we know, God, you are indeed able to do. God, we're praying for every name that's on the prayer list this morning. We're praying for Aunt Peggy. We're praying for Kimberly Crawford. We're praying for Monica Wilson, for Christian 
Gregoria. We're praying for Christina Shy this morning. We're praying for Melvin and Margaret Thomas. We're praying for Ray Ellis. We're praying for the Glasgow family. We're praying for Pastor and Lady Glasgow. We're praying for Mother Wilson and her family. Lord, we're praying against this gun violence that is so pervasive in the land. God, so many shootings, so many people, oh God, shooting one another. But God, we're trusting you, Lord, to put an end to it because you are the God of all peace. We're praying for Lydia this morning. We're praying for Vandora Huntley. We're praying for the Pettiford family, for the Neal family, for the Hood family. We're praying for those who are suffering with depression today, that you would deliver them, God, and help them in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Deb Parker. We're praying for Zanita McNeil. We're praying for Erica, for Kevin, for the McNeil family. We're praying for the Tassant family. We're praying for Mother Rahama Clark today. We're praying for Baron Stooks today. We're praying for missionary Domingo's daughters. We're praying for Renee Anderson, God. Everybody that stands in need of a blessing, Lord, stretch out your hand. Everybody, my God, that's in the chat. Everybody in Messenger. Everybody whose name been, that's been sent by text or email. We're lifting them up now because we believe that you're able. God, we're praying that you would touch and deliver. We're praying that you would save, my God, to the utmost. Destroy every yoke, every chain, every barrier that prevents them from coming to you and let them believe on your name, God. Oh, Shandi Arama Satanaye, and receive the witness of the Holy Ghost in themselves. God, I'm praying today for the sick everywhere. God, remember Aaron. God, touch his knees. Remember Mother Pat Martin. Remember Kim Turner. Remember Margaret Speller today. Remember Zayden. Remember Alexis Smith. Lamont Edwards. Remember Sister Andrea Perry. Remember Pastor James Holiday. Remember the Turner family. We lift up Elder Taylor. We pray for Deacon Brian Basil today, for Shirley, for Joyce Tibbs. We pray, oh God, for healing for Missionary Domingo. We pray for Victoria. We pray, my God, for Seymour and Doris Staten, for Aunt Ida, for Aunt Irma, for Zayden, for Marie Brown. We pray for Sissy Reed today. We pray for Deb Porter, for Tawanda. Oh God, Halliburton. God, we're lifting up, my God, Leonard Porter today. Mother Tracia. Oh God, Crocker. We're praying, oh God, for Roberta Jenkins, for Jean Long. We're praying for anybody suffering with Alzheimer's and dementia. We're praying for Bishop D this morning. We're praying for Brenda Griffin today. We're praying for Pastor Winston. We're praying for Marilyn Pierce. We're praying for Kathleen Murphy Jackson. Lord, everybody, everywhere that's sick, we lift them up today. We lift up Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We pray for Mother Shirley Clark. Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Apostle David Maxwell. My God, we're praying today that you would remember Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Mac Vincent, Apostle Leroy Joseph today. Lord, remember everybody. That's sick everywhere. Remember Brother Wiggins today, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. We lift up Dr. Hayward, Doc, Sister Hayward and Dr. Hayward's mother. We pray, my God, for Mother Jill, Mother Pride. We pray, Lord God, for Mother Chambers, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. We pray, my God, for Lady Staten. We pray for Margie today. We pray, God, for Sister Polk, Lord, everybody. Mother Carol Coleman this morning. We pray for everybody that's sick, Lord. We lift them up before you because we know that you're a healer right now in the name of Jesus. We pray today, my God, we pray, hallelujah, for Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. We pray today, Lord, that you would touch and heal Elder Tyson, Elder Smith, Lord. Remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff, God. Remember them in a special way. Remember, my God, Mother Tanaj, Mother Home, and Missionary Simmons, Lord. Stretch out your healing hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're praying today that you would strengthen and deliver liver. Oh God, and heal everywhere, everywhere. God, there's a need for healing. My God, take your healing hand there. Remember Catherine, Cynthia, and Duchess in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember my God, Marlette, Maurice, Dennis today. Remember Tony today. Remember my God, Kimberly, Lord, everybody that's sick, Lord, touch them in the name of Jesus. Lord, walk into every hospital, every nursing home. My God, into hospice today. Lord, walk, my God, into the COVID ward, the cancer ward, the ICU unit, the dialysis unit, God, and bring healing 
that only you can provide. Lord, anybody watching this morning that needs healing in their body, we pray for them now. God, we're praying for grieving people everywhere. God, we're lifting up Elder Stevens. We're praying for Linda today. We're praying for the family of Joanne Bird. We're praying for the families of all of these shooting victims, God. We're praying for Danielle Payton. We're praying for Michelle Rice today in the loss of her mother. We're praying for Parker Dennis in the loss of his sister, Lord. We're praying, oh God, for grieving people everywhere. Remember Remember Dr. Phyllis Carter and the Carter family. Remember, my God, Bishop Michael Fields, Shekinah, and the Fields Green families. God, remember today, Lord, Mother Ida Harrell and the Harrell family. Remember, my God, Mother Jacqueline Grant and the Grant family. Remember the Blunt family. Remember the Hargroves, the Kramers, everybody that's grieving everywhere. We're praying for their grace. The church families, God, we're lifting them up today, trusting that you're able to touch, Lord, and strengthen in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today, my God, for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. We're praying today, God, for the Moyers, for the Meadows family, for the Perkins family. God, we lift up, my God, the Dockery family. We pray for Sister Pam Dockery, my God, hallelujah, and her family in the loss of her brother and other relatives. God, we're praying today for the White family. We're praying for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, for Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street family. Families. God, we're praying today that you would remember in the name of Jesus, the Ransom family, that you would remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. God, we're praying today that you would look on, my God, oh God, Monique and Sean and the Gary Porter family. God, strengthen Monique, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying today, my God, for the, hallelujah, for everybody. My God, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, God, the Bankses, the Middletons. Lord, remember, oh God, everyone that's grieving everywhere, God, even in these holiday times. Oh, God, where grief is so heavy, strengthen them now. Remember the Taylors today. Remember, my God, the Felix family, the Sapatas, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleams, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs, the Phillips, the Taylors. My God, remember, my God, the Josephs, every grieving family, the Davises, the Allens, the Caldwells. My God, remember the Hayses, the Moors. In the name of Jesus, remember every grieving heart, God. Remember Remember the Harbisons, God. Remember them. Oh, God, remember the Adams family, the Austin family. God, every grieving widow, widow word, child, parent. God, touch them and strengthen them now. Siblings, God, hold us together, God, by your power and by your grace and give us grace to stand. I'm praying for the church today, for every member of the body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every minister and deacon, every mother and missionary, every young person, God, in the church. I'm praying today, my God, for every, hallelujah, musician, singer, and psalmist. God, remember the church today. God, give grace to the church. Give strength to the church. God, let the church walk in the confidence that you have the record and the Holy Spirit is the witness of our salvation. My God, I thank you for faith. Oh, God, the faith, oh God, faith, faith to believe and trust you. Oh, God, to acknowledge the power that is in your name. God, I pray today for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs everywhere. I pray today, God, for your grace, my God, to be upon everybody. Lord, as we, oh God, deal with these germs and viruses and conditions everywhere, God, that you would protect the uninfected and God, that you would heal everybody that's been made sick, Lord. Bring your healing virtue, hey, God, to the lives of everybody and give them recovery, even from long-term impact. Lord, I pray today, my God, that you would heal the land because the land is so sick, it is so troubled, it is so perverse, God, that we need your touch in this land. Heal the land from sin, from hatred, from jealousy, from violence, from injustice, from racism, from sexism. God, heal the land and let the church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, I pray that you would cover us today Day. Protect us and keep us under your precious blood. And as you do all of this, we give your name the glory. Hey, God, the honor and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Everybody on this line, 
give God praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Yes, I am a believer. God has my record. Yes, I am a believer. God has my record. Hallelujah. And he that believes has life. So I have life. I have life here. I have eternal life. I have life in that more abundantly because I am a believer and God has the record of my faith. Hallelujah. I'm not relying on the witness of men. I'm not relying on the record of men. Yes, somewhere a greater refuge temple in New York City is the record of my baptism. Hallelujah. I believe that. I know that. They took the record the day I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But more importantly, hallelujah, God has the record of of my faith, of my salvation, of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. God has that record. Yes, my name is on the membership list of Greater Refuge Church in Henderson because that's where I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but God has my record. God has my record. I am a believer. God has my record. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those who are on the conference call. Keep sharing the number with others so they can come and join and be with us. You can also stay connected through our podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. You can also stay connected hallelujah, through giving. And we want to encourage everybody to give your support to this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate them. So if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. Again, that's Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is Refuge Temple in is in North C is in Carolina.com. www.refugetemplenc.com is our website. You can give on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, you can share via GiveLify. Just search for Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we are thankful most of all that you have been a part and you are a part of this morning prayer family. I love the family. I thank God for each of you and all that you bring with your prayers, your faith, and your support. And thank you for being a part of the family. So please keep inviting others to prayer. Keep coming to prayer and keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my dad. Pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Just hold us up in prayer and pray for us. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us and pray one for another, that God's mercy and grace might flow in our lives, that he might strengthen us and bless us accordingly. The Lord strengthen you in your faith and remind you that he is the witness of your salvation. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom, shalom.